example, emotions lead to actions, negative or positive, and then actions lead to results. And it's something that Tony Robbins talks about, and it's something that it is important enough to reinforce on this show, um, thinking about where our emotional home is. So where do we spend most of the time emotionally? And we, a, a good analogy is um, when, you, when you see on the news, which I don't watch the news, but you know, if you read on, in, a, in a blog or whatever, uh, that there's a hurricane and it's a, there's a hurricane that hits an area over and over and over again or some natural disaster that hits an area over and over and over again a lot of people wonder why the hell do people keep moving back to that same area when they know there's, it's highly likely there's going to be some natural disaster that will hit it again since it has hit it many, many other times. And um, the, the thing is that that thought process can be hypocritical if we, or we as a person, um, go back to our same emotional home over and over again when it's not uh, giving us the results that we're looking to get. So, for example, if my emotional home is a lackadaisical or um, aloof during the day, then I'm not going to get the things done that need to get done to run run the, the businesses that I've got. And... Um, it's important to just do a, a self-check on where is my emotional home exactly? What do I typically go back to? Where is my default emotion? What is my default emotion um, throughout the day? Everything, not, not, not when I'm super um, into a, a particular thing or not when I'm pissed off about something, but where is my, generally speaking, what is my emotional home and how does that serve me? And what could be the disadvantages of that emotional state? And just doing a self-check on that because as she pointed out, emotions, the emotions that we have and the emotions we experience more regularly, they lead to the actions that we take and then those actions will lead to results both positive and negative. So just doing a self-check on that. Yeah, I remember uh, back when I was with Coach T, he, he – um... He discussed that process as you're talking about. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was, it was like you know you start it, it starts it, it starts uh, with um, like a thought, and then it, that thought turns into emotion, and the emotion turns into like an action, an, a, a, uh, a strategy, and the strategy turns into action or something like that. It's probably not right, but it's something like that. Um, but something else that because because you're talking about the kind of your, your default position. Yeah. Something that I I learned a long time ago it was from a podcast I was listening to. Um, about emotional intelligence, and, and, and I, I can't remember specifically what it's called, but I think if you just Google like, um, like chart of emotions or something, it, it kind of breaks down like the six or eight main categories of emotion from like, you know, on the far left being like, you know, you're you're in pretty bad shape to the far right being like you're just like you know super high consciousness, and the exercise was something on the lines of of. It's time to take some time, but every hour or every half an hour or something, um, just taking out a notebook and then kind of like writing down like what emotion you're feeling in that specific moment and then kind of like write down what you're doing um, at that time. And uh, what else was it? I think it was, it was those two things and kind of just like write about how you feel and just do that for like every hour for like a week. And that's one way to figure out what you're where you're spending most of your time at. Now, as you mentioned, Joe, you might have something going on that week that might necessarily make you not in your default or your base position or your home position, but it just gives you an idea of what, what you know, what, 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 uh, what, what emotional state you're spending most of your time in. So obviously if you, you know, look at that after a week and realize that, you know, out of, you know, you're away, you're away for 16 hours and eight of those hours, you're on the far left of that, emotional chart then you probably reevaluate what you're doing whereas if you're you know realizing hey like when i'm doing you know this specific task i'm always further to the right on that chart maybe you can do do more of that depending on what that is 
Um, again, I, I can't remember exactly what the exercise is called or how to find it, but if you, it's basically, it's a chart. It'll have like at the top, like, you know, depressed or angry, you know, content, uh, happy and ecstatic or something like that. And it has other uh, emotional words below each of those um, categories.